Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Tusalamiane ile ya oxygen. Ha ha. <laughs> I count it a great honor to stand before you. Because I've never done it on a, on a Sunday. Probably I've stood before you on some other day. But not on Sunday. So for me it's a great honor. Thank you Bishop for giving me access to the pulpit. Thank you Pastor Alice and the entire leadership. I don't take it for, for granted. Thank you, men. It's men who imagined I have something to share. <laughs> I didn't know myself that uh, I had something. So when I was called, and uh, I just said, I'm available. So I kept on asking God, when more than uh, 4,000 or so eyes will be looking at me, what do I tell them? So thank you, man, uh, with, under the leadership of Ken Chitala. Uh, I think I want also to remember that I belong to a family. I think they are seated in our county. In our county is that side, our county. I think uh, they are led by Ross and the team. The team must be uh, around. So if we can be upstanding, please so that you are seen, just in case I'm given other members of the family. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. You can see that is my family, led by Ross Kuku, and then uh, Roy on the last, in the middle is Ian, and then Ami. Of course, Job must have gone to Sunday Sunday school. Thank you very much. You've been an encouragement to me. Let's appreciate them, please. Um, of course, my name is Charles. Uh, some people and most of them call me Charles. Charles, you know? No? Okay. Wafula. Wafula simply means a rain. So I'm here to reign. <laughs> and I'm um, Sikuku. Uh, uh, Sikuku is my father's name. And it simply means he was born on a, a Christmas day. <laughs> and you know, there were not very many big days those days. Christmas was one of the big days. Um, I think... Uh, those are enough preliminaries. I'm getting used to the environment. Uh, of course, the man next to me is uh, a friend of mine. He's also my chairman. Uh, they see what uh, he will do before he goes down. We accepted that we'll preach together so that he reduces the butterflies around here. Uh, so... Uh, I want us to go straight away to the word and then I will ask him to do what we agreed he should do. We read uh, Mark 6 30 to 44. Shall we read together? Then the apostles gathered to Jesus Both, uh, let's go, let's go again. Then the apostles gathered together to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, Come aside by yourself to a deserted place and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. But the multitude saw them departing 
and many knew him and learned there on foot from all the cities. They arrived before them and came together to him. But, and Jesus, when he came out, saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and already hour is late. Set them away, that they may go into the surrounding country, and villages, and buy themselves bread, for they were nothing to eat. But he answered and said to them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? But he said to them, How many roads do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on green grass. So they sat down in lands, in hundreds and in fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them, and the two fish he divided among them all. So they ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves and were about five thousand men, Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you this particular morning. We bless you because of your faithfulness for giving us an opportunity to be here in this sanctuary, our God. We want to pray that you, through Charles, you speak to us, our Father. We are praying, dear Father, oh God, as he ministered, we connect with the one that he has for us, our God. And this morning, we pray that the anointing of God will flow from his buried out to the people that God, our Father, are listening to him, dear Lord. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you because of your faithfulness. For I pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I know quite a number of us must have seen me as big as I am. But uh, I need just to remind us that uh, I was also born. Okay? I was also born and grew up just like us here. Uh, and I also went to, to school like us who went and some who are still uh, going. When I had finished my A level, that is 1984, so I want you to understand why I stood when the bishop asked that those who are above 50. So uh, in 1984, I had finished my A-level and I realized I needed to put up what most put up even much earlier. So I put up a simba, a house, okay, where I could call my own. And this house was made of mud and grass. It was a two-roomed house. Two-roomed house. So when in 1989 I married the beautiful lady Rose, that was the house she found. That was the house. And when as our tradition demands, when a lady comes, that is the house she's in temporarily. That's not her house. So we put up another together so that it becomes hers. This time, it was still a two-roomed house with a wall, but we put iron sheets. What an improvement. In 1998, 
we were blessed with some money. So we moved to town and bought a quarter plot. And that is Kandui. A few of you have come there. But this time, we were still moving up. Now we changed the wording to what we call a permanent house. And it was in brick. So we did the walling, the roofing, and then we put the, 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 the doors and the windows. But we could not do finishing. And that we ended in 2001. Follow that story. We stayed in that house for more than 10 years. And it was never improving. No ceiling. No floor finish. No paint. No nothing. But to us it was. Within that time. 2005. We realized also we needed a house. In Nairobi. So we bought three plots. In Sandton. Some of you visited us there. We put up a house. And it ended up being the same. No finishing. But we are inside. You know, the definition of a house in my place is a wall and a roof. <laughs> Sometime, my sister got a revelation, the one I follow. Then she said, we need to put up a house for our parents. A better house for our parents. Then I wondered why she shared with me. I realized she was sharing with me so that I ran with the vision and deliver it. God being who he is gave us the money and we spent over three or so million shillings and we put up a house for our parents. But interestingly, this house, we finished it well because we painted. You see, my houses were never painted. But the one of our parents, now it's what? Well finished. And then even people were wondering, will they, this, is the, this is the one going to be here or who will be staying in this house? Then they never imagined it was my parents who would stay in the house. And then, the moment we did that for our parents, somehow things turned around. We got the money to do this and finishing to Kandui house. And then, God blessed us with other houses. He moved us away from Sandon to Kireleshwa. Amen. Amen? Then, as if that is not enough, this year, the year of uncommon harvest, uncommon favor, he moved us from Kandui and gave us not a house now. He gave us a home. And this home is in Matunda. So he changed counties. So, uh, moving from Bungoma County, those of us who know, as we like going up. If you saw somebody moving from Kimiriri to what they call the lower zone, there's a problem. But people like moving from the lower zone to Kimiriri to Kitari. Okay? So, you can see that there is an improvement and things are getting better. Then I sat down and wondered, what was this? What was holding us from finishing these houses, what was holding us from doing well? Then I realized 
that God had given us a seed which was just in our stomachs or our pockets and that seed needed to come out as we honor our parents. So it's like as we were honoring our parents, God was doing what he does best so that he blesses us. And you know one interesting thing with the seed, the seed you can always remain with it unless you have cast it on the ground or you bury it on the in the ground in the ground and you allow it to die. Once it dies, then it germinates. And when it germinates, it is when you can get the harvest. So I looked at the seed of honoring our parents as having given birth to these houses. And these houses, in my own definition, is multiplication. Amen? Is multiplication. So where was this multiplication therefore? The multiplication was in the seed. The multiplication was in the seed. It was in the seed. Therefore today, the topic I'm looking at or that is guiding me is your multiplication is locked up in your seed. Your multiplication is locked up in your So I came. I came. That God may use me so that we unlock, uh, we unlock this seed. We unlock this seed. Once we unlock this seed, you are in for harvest. We are in for that common and common harvest and common favor. If you look at Second Corinthians nine ten, it's like the, there are two people there that are being talked about. There is a sower and there is an eater. We had eaten the seed for some time, you know, as we had eaten the seed for for some time. But when we go to Revelation, like I know some of you are also going to get Revelation, so that the seeds you have been eating, you will cast them on the ground. And you are in for it. So there is the sower, and there is the, the eater. And we are told, God provides for both of them. He provides for the sower. He provides for the eater. But interestingly, as it moves on, within that context, the focus changes to the sower. And it, Paul says that God who supplies the seed will always ensure he, you have enough seeds to sow. And God who supplies and watches over as it grows will give you plenty of the harvest. Plenty of the harvest. But I, I don't know what happens with the eater. I don't know. Uh, I would not want to go into that one. But I imagine the eater <laughs> you just eat and uh, you huh? You get it? You, you, yeah. Once you eat the seed, be sure it will never germinate. So there will be no harvest. There will be no what? Harvest. One may sit around and say, probably my parents have a good house. So, unlike you, there's no house to put up. Who knows? Probably 
your parent now requires better beddings he requires what he they require better beddings or if it, even if it's one or even if you don't i i i later on realized that there's nobody who how doesn't have parents even that one who lost they are those you look up to as parents so everyone has parents so i wanted to also to to demystify that that everyone has parents so there is something you can actually do to your parents and that will be your your seed those who are married probably one is unfaithful or one is not submitting so submission can be taken to be your your seed because i want by the time we are finishing this everyone must have a seed in their hands and if you are a child we are told honor your father and mother so if you are a child and we have said you are all children we are expected to be obedient but there are some who are actually children in our midst so you need to see how to respect how to honor your parents it may not be necessarily in times in in terms of 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 the money or what but respect is respect so that is your seed some people may need obedience even to those in authority those you work with those above you those you report to that is your seed that is your seed and there are some people who keep carrying some of us on their backs you walk with us you can imagine now if i'm walking with bishop on my back how heavy how loaded that will be your seed is to release those that you've been working with there are some people you know i'm also a, a chairman of the of, of the development committee here there are some of us who may be saying negative prayers about the renovation is here about the cathedral so your seed is turn, turn around and say a positive prayer about the renovations that are about to come into being the cathedral that is about to come into into being and that will be your seed today that will be your seed your seed because without the seed without the seed there is no and the seed as the bible says in john 12:23 jesus was speaking at one time 12 to 12:24 sorry jesus was speaking and he said unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if it dies it produces many it produces many of course you can say at that time jesus was referring to himself he died that you and me can become the children of of god but the application is the seed you have unless you release it it remains what single if you have 1 million and you remain with it it remains single with you it remains dormant therefore it doesn't produce some of us i'm just i'm being reminded some of us we are very good at making vows vows i will give 1 million towards the cathedral i will give 200000 i will give 100000 i will give i will give i will give but we are not fast enough to redeem that is your seed today you say god i want to redeem my pledges that is your seed that is your seed that is your seed so so now what seed are you holding in your hands what seed and remember it must die and it will want to to kill it today today so that you receive your harvest from the story we read 
I want to pick seven keys. Seven keys. Yani ufunguo. Ukaenda ukafungu. Yeah. Ukafungue your potential. Ukafungue. Yani. Hata wengine mfungue maga. Yes. We want to have a I would rather be handling a problem of parking here all the time when the bishop calls me now, Bishop, how shall we park these vehicles? That is a better problem. Is a better bro? So give us work. If you don't give us work, then after renovation here it's over. Now me need to end the money. We don't have to money. I'm here to work. So you must give me work. You must give me work. So that I, be, I can be thinking of 20 stories up. 40 stories up. So that we'll get you to uh, B001 Bishop Jimmy Kimani. B002 Pastor Alice Kimani. B003 Reverend Geoffrey. Then B0020 or 50 is yours. Are you, are you getting that? So key number one. When you, from the story that we read, when Jesus was now about uh, to, 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 to see how the people can be fed, they realized that what they have is not what? Enough. So, for you to multiply or for you to receive multiplication, you cannot just sit and close your eyes to the problem you are having. You can never. If somebody is sick, that is it. You must know somebody is sick in this place. If somebody doesn't have a job, you must know it. You must just be aware. You must face reality. You cannot pretend. So I call that reality awareness key. You must know. Like Bishop, when he's thinking of renovating this, probably may require 30 million or 20 million. He must cannot pretend and say, oh, he must just say, I require 20 million and he works towards the, the 20 million. When, he's, when he will be moving to the cathedral, probably when we will be finishing, he may require 1 billion. So, Bishop, that is the reality. You cannot sit down and say, oh, no, you don't. No, that is what? Reality. That is reality. And it is the reality which presents itself as a challenge that is actually an environment for miracles or an environment for multiplication. It is that, that reality. Like in the case of the, the widows, the widow of Seraphath. She had to go to Nanja. She So, I said, I'm going to go to Nanja. I'm going to go to Nanja. I'm going to go Okay? I said, I'm going in our house, the wife sleeps in a different bedroom. Okay? And the, the, the husband also sleeps in a different bedroom. Are you getting that? Or even if they slept on the same bed, one faces on the north and another one on the south. That is what? A reality. That is a reality. Like the story we read, of course, the issue of Nani, and they had only little provisions. So there was scarcity. So, I, I pose a question. Is there a challenging situation in your life? In your marriage? In your family? Even in your health? In your ministry? In your workplace? And even I also ask, is there a challenging situation we have in this country? That is an environment for a miracle. And that means... If as many of us as we are, if we have a challenge, 
then we are candidates for miracles or we are candidates for multiplication. And once you have determined that, don't also shut in. Najua kuna watu wengine wanapotembea unakutana na wao pesa shida zinachandikanga tu kwa uso. Ukikutana na yeye tu ni shida tu. Bisho viva I made you and I just look at and say you see I own this one billion problem then I will, I will duck. Keep it sir somewhere. And the next key is what is the big picture? So the big picture key. The big picture. Yani uh, if you look at the whole thing is put yourself in the shoes of God. How is he looking at that problem of yours? The big picture. What will God do in your problem? Okay? What will God do in your problem? And when you are doing that, you are tying it together with the kingdom need. No need can ever be made unless it's tied to the kingdom need. No need can be made unless it's tied to the kingdom need. Like in, in, in the case that we read, in the case that we read, probably before we go there, the issue of the widow of, of Seraphat, we see her, she's picking a few sticks so that she goes and cooks and then dies. Then the man of God comes and tells her, where when it tengenese gidogo sana, then after you gidogo, you will tengenese wengi, wengine. When God is coming in this situation, he's not coming in because of the widow of Sherafat. He's coming in because of the prophet or the man of God. He's coming in because of the man of God. Elijah. So, the big picture was how to sustain the man of God. But it's out of this big picture that the small need is made. The small need is, is made. So, so, the most important thing is how to tie it up to the kingdom need. The third key. Acknowledgement key. Acknowledgement key. At the end of the day, there is always something you have. Okay? Hakuna mutu mwenye hana kitu. Tutusiwe watu wenye tunakaanga tu watuna vitu. Tunakitu. Hata kama saidi tuseme sina kingitu kingine, I have a voice. And I've been given a chance to preach. Anything else? Wacha na nae. Lasima uwe na ki? Watu mungu anafanyanga miujisa kupitia kwa kitu. Anafanyia miujisa kupitia kwa kitu. Kwa hivo, don't undermine what you have. Come on. Like the way when Bishop called us here and you had only a hundred shillings. Put it in an envelope and walk majestically and come and put it. Others will be coming with a hundred thousands, others with two twenty thousands, others with a million, but we were una keep correct. And remember, like in the case of Moses, what did he have? Stuff. So don't just all the time see some, something in your hand to be money. It can also be a staff. You, it can also be your time. Come on, I tell you, mutua kwa chima mitaro hapa. Wee kujo, uchimbe. Come on, atako wa kupangusa mitaro hapa. Wee, niyo, ndi huko na hee kujo, pangusa. Penges, that is what you have. That is what you have. So you must acknowledge what you have. Number four. Faith key. Hani ufungu wa imani. This is the one I like most. Hani imani. Hey. And I was trying to look at Reverend as we were praying for them uh, with, past, with Pastor Anne. And I, I looked at them. And I looked at them. I said, what 
do these people have? Goja. Goja, sasa tutafika hapo. In other words, faith is you must just believe something is going to happen. Just believe that something is going to happen. Hmm? Don't care where your wife is going to come from. Believe that the way your wife is come. Your husband is come. Your healing is come. Your promotion is come. Your vehicle is coming. And like I believe the renovation is coming. The cathedral is coming. How it is going to come is not me. You know, and you see like when he, in this case of Jesus, he tells people after knowing what they have, he tells them panga watu wakai sawa sawa. 50,000 wakai sawa sawa. Yaani wanapokaa wanatarajia. Wanatarajia muji? So I want to see people who are seated here wakitarajia muji? Because wana ki? Correct. Wana kitu unatarajia muujiza siku moja <laughs> i was sent to represent the minister and when i went there so in a in a in a show and it happens this show they were vehicle so i ended at a jeep at that time tulikuwa tuna voxi so nikaingia jeep sasa mimi ni wa kristo waziri so i must behave like waziri nikawasha ufunguo nikauliza how much is this one wakaniambia is 7 million nikamwambia if i came by the end of next week will it be okay The other day, my daughter was reminding me about the jeep, so I laughed. <laughs> so you you must anticipate. You must be in the way in the anticipation mode. Bishop, to tarajie kwanza pengine fifty million. So the ibag is ingine. Abada to tarajie one point five billion. Ibag is change. Ipia nisa nisa wa sis sis to endere. The faith key. Number five. Now, hapa ndiyo inatushindanga. Yani, uko na kitu, na lazima upande. Yani, uachilie. Na kife, ndiyo kiote. Kikisha hota ndiyo, utapata mavuno. Yani, let go ki. Uachilie. Ingia hapa, Uone kama ni pastor KK umwambie my brother I have 50000 shillings wewe chukua mimi sina kazi naye At that time when you are giving you need a million Chukua hiyo 50000 mimi sina acha na na mimi nakuja hapa naambia Mungu nimepanda niletee 1 mi niletee 1 million Moses was told to throw. You know, you know, I kept on asking my wife, what is the difference between throwing and putting? <laughs> you know, if you are told to throw, can you throw? We realize, okay, there are some games where you throw. But in most cases, throwing, ni kuachiria na usaha. Usaha. Moses was told to throw. What was he throwing? He was throwing his profession. As a shepherd. Akali wachiria chini. Pap. Na ikakufa. The word he picked later. See the stuff he threw down there. The disciples brought the five and the two. What fed the people was not the five and the, the two. You must be willing to throw. To let go. To let go. To let go. As God let go his son. So that as we came. You must be willing to let go. Number six. And la second last one. Before that one. <laughs> I think I must emphasize this. That. What you are letting go. You are bringing to the altar. Okay? And you know what the purpose of the altar ni nini? Reverend, Reverend Wameshinda. 
the purpose of the altar ni kuua. It's a place of sacrifice. Altar. So you cannot, for example, when we, we spend three million, we can't say it came back to us. No. It came, it, other things may have come, but not necessarily the three, the three million. But more come. Then the number six. This is where my friend Zachary uh, likes. Najua mui mungu, ui ni mungu, lakini anajukua na anaangalia juu. So, Jesus must also have known as he was looking up, the things come up from there. And things come from heaven. And we only tap into heavenly things through prayer. Prayer key. If you don't pray, I don't think you'll ever get. But today I said, let's pray. Let's what? Pray. Because the Bible says, we ask. That ask and it will be given. Eh? Seek. And you will be fine. Knock and the door will be opened. How will you ask unless in prayer? How will you seek unless in prayer? How will you knock unless in prayer? To a what wakuomba. Tuombe. Mungu leta multiplication. Leta kwangu furaha. Leta kwangu umocha. Leta kwa. Leta kwangu. Na mwisho mwisho pia wende wanzo kusema leta kwe. Kwe tu. Yani wanzo na wewe lakini wewe pia pia ujinyime kito kusema leta kwe. It is in that that you will benefit. Seventh and the last one. Mungu vile aliangalia juu. And uh, I imagine he prayed. He later on, when he saw the provisions up there, he said, God, thank you. Thank you for providing. Eh? Thank you for providing. So that tells me we have two options. We can thank God before or thank God ah, Just like the ten lepers. One came back to thank after. But if your faith can be so filled that you say, God, nimekuomba na nimekuona na utatenda na sema, sandi kwa kuniponya. Gratitude expression key. Gratitude expression key. Gratitude. Tusiwe tukila sandi kulalamika, kulalamika, nungunika. No, no, no. You know, most of us, when you are given something, you only see the half empty. We don't see the half full. You can only be somebody of gratitude when you, you can see the half full. Conclusion. You, your needs will be provided for as you provide for others. You can imagine Jesus alijua our jamani wa Wananja. But he worked on the bigger need. In the course of it, our peer when you are going to jaw, the twelve were fed. Can you see that? As we provide for the bigger need, our needs are simply taken care of. So as we serve others, we shall be served. As we forgive others, we shall be forgiven. And that's why the scripture, Luke 6, 37, must always come true. That the gift, and it shall be given back to you. Same measure. Yes. I, 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 I also wanted to see people looking at me, you see. I think, uh, Bishop, thank you. I saw you are watching. Because, it, you know, some of us, when you go to Kienda Kushaka Mahindi, if you have only gone with Akoro Goro, you must come back. Ume finiri? Finiri. Now, ime panda chu. So, as a mama kikwona na chua, do you harifanya kazi mzu? Kazi mzuri. So, it's my prayer. It's my prayer that with the seed that we have identified, we will be assisted to cast it on the ground. As we cast it on the ground, and let it die, it will give hundredfold. 
60 fold, 30 fold. Amen? And remember, I put up one house, I was given many houses. So, hata nyinyi, ukitaka pengine gari, invest in somebody who is buying a car. Ukitaka mjengo, invest in somebody who is an agent. With that, I say thank you for your precious opportunity.